fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Hyo Silver, a Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go, big fellow. Lone Silver, away! Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's encouraging for all of us to know that champions are made, not born. We can get ahead like Ted Klazuski, power hitter for the Cincinnati Red Legs. Here's the story of little Ted and how he worked to get ahead by playing ball each chance he got and doing what the champs all taught. A bowl of Wheaties helped a lot. Now Ted slams them off the wall, still likes Wheaties best of all. Why, big Ted Klazuski was raised on Wheaties, and you bet he still eats them. Ted knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Ted, break up the game. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> At sunset, the Lone Ranger and Toto were riding along the bank of a wide stream of clear water that ran through the valley. When they reached a stand of timber, the masked man signaled a halt. Oh, 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 Bottle float on water. A bottle? Mm-hmm. Both men stood beside their horses and watched the floating bottle carried toward them by the stream. Presently, the masked man said, Oh, no, there seems to be a piece of paper inside that bottle. Ah, that right. I'll get it. The Lone Ranger waded into the water knee-deep, secured the bottle, and returned to Tonto's side. Are uh, writing on paper? Yes, Tonto. I'll break the bottle and see what's written. There, throw some dirt over the broken glass, will you? Mm-hmm. This looks like a page torn from a notebook. What did it say? I'm a prisoner in the Hillside Hotel. Bring law. Save me before it is too late. Sign John Herkimer, room 200. John Herkimer. Mm, you know him? Yes, Toto. He's a fine old gentleman. His son is one of the most brilliant engineers in the country. He's built several railroad tunnels. Mm, me here, Jack Herkimer. I met Jack and his father during the building of a tunnel for the Union Pacific. Where hotel? It must be in the town of Hillside. I see that's in this valley a few miles upstream. We go there? Yes. Untie the blankets and cooking gear, Tonto. We'll leave them here so the horses will carry no extra weight. Oh. While you're doing that, I'll rig a disguise. In his saddlebags, the Lone Ranger carried extra clothing as well as materials to change his complexion and the general appearance of his face. After a few minutes of work, he looked like an aged prospector as he stood unmasked beside his horse. Ready, Toto? Uh, I'm ready. He's said a big fellow. Come on, Silver! Get him up the car! Following the bank of the stream, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode upstream for about an hour. It was dusk when they reached the edge of the woods and halted their horses. Oh, sure. oh. Charred wood and stone foundations were all that remained of the buildings that had once made up the settlement. Only the two-story hotel had escaped the fire that destroyed the town. The hotel, which stood close to the steep hill at one side of the valley, was badly in need of repair. Look like no one lived there now. I'll soon find out. Easy, steady, big fella. Stay here with the horses, Toto. You go to the hotel alone? Yes. I'll try to learn something about John Herkimer. Oh, 
During the walk of about 200 yards from the woods to the hotel, the Lone Ranger moved with a shuffling gait in keeping with his disguise as an aged prospector. As he neared the building, he noticed that only traces of paint remained on the split and broken clapboards, and there were many broken windows. As he crossed the covered porch, the door was opened suddenly by a heavily built woman who held a gun in one hand. I saw you coming, mister. State your business and be quick about it. Well, this being a hotel... Not I anymore. Could... It's a private home and it's mine. Oh. Last time I came here, there was quite a town and the hotel was running. That's when a lot of galoots like you were searching for gold in the hills. Yes, ma'am, and a number of men found gold. It didn't last. When the claims petered out, a lot of people moved away. The rest of them left after the town burned down. Now, there's no one here but my husband and me, and we're not running a hotel, so if you're... Ma'am, just... I... I'm looking for a gent named John Herkimer. John Herkimer? Yep. I, I never heard the name. Now, shove on, mister. I'm busy. Uh, that's my husband. He, he's a bit local. Oh, you don't say. I reckon I'd better explain. You see, most of the time, Joe's all right. But every so often, he has a spell when he thinks everyone's trying to kill him. Uh, during those spells, I have to keep him locked in his room. Oh, uh, do the two of you live here alone? Uh, yeah. Joe's spells are worse when others are around. That's why we live in a deserted place like this. We bought the hotel for practically nothing after the town burned down. Uh, now, mister, will you clear out? Yes, ma'am. Sorry I bothered you. Good day, ma'am. Good day. Kate Sloan watched the visitor leave the porch and walk slowly toward the woods. Then she went inside and closed the door. Her husband appeared from a side room. Joe, that man was asking about Herkimer. I heard the talk. Why do you suppose he thought Herkimer would be here? I don't know. Herkimer yelled for help. I heard him. I'm going upstairs right now and find out about it. I'll go with you. I sent Lefty to keep an eye on Herkimer when you saw the stranger approaching the front door. When he yelled, I didn't know what to say. You thought fast, Kate. That was a good story you told about me having spells and having to be locked in a room. <laughs> Joe Sloan and his wife walked along the second floor corridor to a room in the front of the hotel. They saw John Herkimer Sr., father of the young engineer, unconscious on the bed. Lefty stood at his side and explained. I hit him with my gun barrel, Joe. I came here to watch him like you said, but he cried out real sudden. He took me by surprise. Uh, How bad's he hurt? Oh, he's uh, not hurt much. I just tapped him. He's coming, too. Oh, my, my head. Herkimer, we've been giving you and your son mighty fine treatment, but it seems you don't appreciate it. You tried to make trouble for us by yelling for help. <laughs> do, you, do you think I like being held prisoner? You'll like it even less from now on. I'm cutting out all the fancy trimmings you've been getting. No more books to read or wine to drink or swimming in the river. Take those books, Luffy. Yeah, right. And take the wine away from them. Well, where is it? I, I finished it. Where's the empty bottle? It is uh, carried out a couple of days ago with a food tray. Red picks up the dirty dishes. He must have thrown it out. Mm. Uh, come here, we're nearly through with our job. If you want to go free with your son... You'd better not make another play to cause trouble. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger rejoined Toto in the woods. During the gathering darkness, he removed his disguise and put on his own clothes and mask while he told of his visit. And when that woman said she and her husband lived there alone, I knew she was lying. I could see through the hall into the dining room, and the table was set for at least six people... Maybe more. Uh, maybe also lie about husband having six pounds. Probably. The cry I heard was cut off sharply as if someone had throttled a man or knocked him out. Uh, maybe it's uh, Herkimer. That's possible. Uh, Kim is heavy. Yes. What we do now? We'll wait until it's dark, then leave the horses here at Ground Hitch and go together to the hotel. And we'll go quietly. A short time later, the masked man and Toto moved silently and kept concealed as well as possible in underbrush that grew along the bank of the stream. There was no moon, but the faint starlight revealed a man sitting on the ground near the water's edge. He seemed to be watching a lighted front window on the hotel's second floor. There might be a guard. Mm -hmm. We kept through? Yes. The guard was wholly unaware that anyone was near until strong arms gripped him from behind. Before he could cry out, a hand was clamped across his mouth. A gun jabbed him in the back, and a low voice said, Keep quiet if you want to stay alive. The guard knew better than to struggle. Threatened by a gun, he remained quiet, while Toto gagged him and tied his hands and feet. Uh, stay here and watch him, Toto. 
I'll climb to the porch roof and see who's in that lighted room. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. This is Mel Allen, sports announcer, coming at you again and hammering away with those five big words, champions are made, not born. Let me tell you about the kangaroo kid, Jim Pollard, of the world champion Minneapolis Lakers. Jumping Jim wasn't born to dunk those layups. He practiced hard when he was a youngster and just as hard today. And is it any surprise that Jim Pollard's been eating Wheaties since he was 11? Take another pro basketball champ, Bob Davies of the Rochester Royals. Ever watch Bob bring that ball down the floor? Well, he started working on that dribble way back in grammar school and eating Wheaties even then. It's more than practice, more than hard work, more than the will to win. It's also a matter of eating right. Sure, it's Wheaties I'm talking about. Wheaties, bowl after bowl. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Yes, sir, you bet your last bowl of Wheaties, champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. to continue. A short time later, the masked man was on the hotel porch. By standing on the porch railing, he gripped the edge of the veranda roof and drew himself up. He made his way to the lighted window, peered cautiously into the room, and saw John Herkimer tied hand and foot lying on the bed. There was no lock on the window. The Lone Ranger opened it and stepped into the room. He drew a knife as he stepped to the bedside. Herkimer, I'll have you free in a few seconds. I remember you, the Union Pacific. Yes. There, your hands are free, not a feet. A gang of crooks live here. They captured my son and me. The door. Pass. Be quiet. Hey, Joe! That'll hold you. Let me go. Come on upstairs. I'll drag this man into the room. The others downstairs, they heard him. They're coming. Now close the door. Here, take this man's gun. Here's my knife. Free your feet. I'll try to hold the others back. While Herkimer worked desperately to cut the heavy rope around his ankles, the Lone Ranger drew his gun. When he heard the voices of the outlaws in the hall, he fired through the door. More bullets are waiting for anyone who opens that door. Shoot through the door, boy! The masked man stood to one side, away from the bullets that splintered through the door. He saw that Lefty was still unconscious, then glanced at Herkimer. Your ankle's free. Yes. Go out the window. What I said still goes, and this proves it. Get out while those crooks are deciding on their next move. But you... I'll follow you. Drop from the porch roof and go directly to the stream tunnels there. My son... We is... can't help him unless we escape. Now, hurry! Despite his age, Herkimer moved with speed and agility. He went through the window, down the sloping roof, and dropped to the ground. The Lone Ranger followed, and the two ran toward the stream, joined Toto, and hurried to the woods. In the woods where they had left Scout and Silver, the Lone Ranger listened to John Herkimer. As you know, the old hotel was built against the foot of a mountain. Yes. My son Jack received a letter from a man named Sloan asking him to call at the Hillside Hotel to discuss rebuilding the town. Well, I went to the hotel with him and we were both captured. By Sloan? Sloan and six other crooks. Sloan's wife was there, too. They wanted my son to do a job for them and threatened to kill me if he refused. How long ago? Oh, several weeks. Oh. They treated me very well, but they made it clear that my son would be killed if I tried to escape. They allowed me to go to the river under guard to bathe and gave me anything I wanted to eat and drink. I asked for wine so I'd have an empty bottle. Yes, we found the bottle in your note. That's what brought us to Hillside. I managed to get it into the stream without being noticed by the guard. What about your son? I haven't seen Jack since we were captured. I went to the hotel earlier, posing as a prospector. Oh, so that was you? Yes. I cried out. Yes, I heard you. From the talk I'd overheard, I knew the crooks were nearly through with their job, and I was desperate. After you left, they tied me as you found me. They planned to finish their work tonight. Now, what are they trying to do? The leader of their gang is in the new prison, and he's the only one who knows where the gang's money is hidden. So they're going to break him out. How? Few people know of it, but there's a tunnel through the mountain. The bed of a stream that dried up years ago. One end of the tunnel opens into the cellar of the hotel. And the other end? It opens into the valley on the far side of the mountain. But at one point, it goes near the new prison. Oh. The crooks are working in relays under the direction of my son to cut a side tunnel that will lead directly beneath the cell of their leader in prison. Then they'll cut through the floor and 
Let him out. How do they know which cell the leader occupies? They're in touch with Regan's lawyer. Regan? Yes. They call him Rifle Regan. Mm-hmm. Keep it You have captured him. Yes, he's in prison for life for stealing army rifles and selling them to Indians. The law's been looking for the rest of his gang. They expect to get him out tonight. Yes, Silver. Herkimer, you ride double on Tonto's horse. Yes, sir. Tonto, go to the place where we left our gear. Wait there. Uh, They'll kill my son. Let's hope there's time to prevent it. Easy, steady, big fella. Montilla! Riding at top speed, the Lone Ranger guided his great horse Silver over the high, treacherous mountain to the new territorial prison. He was met at the gate by armed guards. Oh, oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. I must see the warden right away. Now, hold on. Mask men are not... The warden will not question my mask. Hand him this silver bullet and tell him I'm waiting. The warden remembered the man who carried silver bullets, the almost legendary figure who had helped capture the notorious outlaw, Rifle Regan. He came in person to the gate and escorted the Lone Ranger to his office. I'm very glad to see you again. If you're hungry... Uh, warden, I came here at top speed because every second counts. Regan's gang is planning a jailbreak. A jailbreak? Well, I'm not worried. This prison is... Yes, the walls are high, the locks are strong, and the guards are to be trusted. But Regan will escape unless you act fast. But how can he? Through the floor. The floor? Yes, his gang is tunneling underground to reach a point beneath his cell. Now, if we work fast, we may be able to capture every member of the Regan gang. But it will take a half a dozen men with guns. We'll have a dozen. Just tell me what to do. Later that night, Jack Herkimer, thin and tired from weeks of work and worry, stood in the tunnel with Joe Sloan and several others of the gang. Hurry up, Herkimer. According to my calculations, we should be directly beneath Regan's cell right now. What? You mean if we break through the ceiling of the tunnel and come into Regan's cell? I think so. You'd better be right if you expect to see your father alive. You heard him, boys. Dig at the ceiling. Yeah. All right. <coughs> When we've gone up a few feet, we should hit rock. That'll be the floor of the cell. Jack, how do we cut through that rock? The prison floor is made of big slabs of rock. Work around one, it'll drop. Standing on improvised platforms, the men who dug at the ceiling of the tunnel presently heard their picks strike solid stone. That's it, boy. Scrape the dirt away carefully. Work to the edge of that stone slab. We are... Now, follow the edge on this side. Careful now. Don't stand beneath it. How thick are those stone slabs? About three inches. When we get one of them out, will there be room for Regan to get out? Yes. It's loose. Careful. It's about to drop. It's coming. Here she comes. There's an open space above. Let's hope it's Regan's cell. It better be. It is. Regan's looking down at us. Make room for me on that platform so I can talk to her. All right, come on. Let me get the Hi, Regan. Howdy, Sloan. I've been waiting for you. Are you alone, Miss Elle? Yeah. What about the guards? Well, they won't be taken up for a couple of hours. Come on, then. We'll be miles away by the time they discover that you're gone. There's a wood platform right beneath the hole. You can get down easy. I'm going somewhere, Regan. You, hey, who's that? The warden. He's at the cell door. i got to get down there first. Come on, Regan. Go ahead, Regan. You'll be back. He says you'll be back? What do you mean? I don't know. You're all trapped. Look. Someone in the tunnel. Too dark to see anyone. We're all armed and ready to shoot. You can't escape. Give me a gun. We'll shoot our way through the tunnel. Right, here's an extra gun. Oh! That bullet hit the gun. We're ready if you want gunplay. we got to get past those men. Come on, boys. Open fire and put out that lantern. Oh, the lone ranger and the men assigned by the prison warden to help him could not be seen in the dark tunnel. But the outlaws, even after extinguishing their lantern, were visible targets in the light that came through the hole from the cell above. I'm hit! My arm is back! We got no chance! I'm up into this cell if you don't want to be shot. I'm gone! I'm going! Don't shoot me! Me too! Make room for me in the platform! That's the only way out of the tunnel. Come on. For the outlaws, there was no choice. To escape the gunfire, they climbed through the hole into the tunnel ceiling. Meanwhile, the warden and armed guards had entered Regan's cell. Each man who entered through the hole in the floor faced gun. And here's another. All right, drop your gun. Stand over there against the wall with your pal. No more that trick. Regan, did you help set this trap? No, I didn't know anything about it. Jack Herkimer came into the cell after all the crooks had been captured. He was followed by the masked man. The warden grinned and said, Give the masked man a hand. I can make it, warden. Are you alone? Yes. Yeah, your men who were with me have gone back to the tunnel. They'll return here with Sloan's wife. How are you, Jack? Why, I'm all right, but but I don't understand. Your father sent us here. My dad? 
Is he all right? Yes, you'll be with him before daybreak. Oh, thank goodness. Boys, take those crooks to the detention cell. That'll hold them till they're assigned to permanent quarters. All right. Come on, get along. Did you hear that phone? What? I said permanent. You crooks are going to be in jail for life. Yeah, right. Jack, do you want to go back through the tunnel with me? Through the tunnel? Yes, I left my horse near the hotel. We ride double to the camp for your father's wedding. Oh, all right. <laughs> Jack, there's a chance that few men get. You're going to ride with a lone ranger on his famous white horse. And you're going to hear the cry that thrills the hearts of law-loving people in the West. It's Hayo Silver. Away. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, 515 Deadline. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws because he knows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Say, you ought to try Cheerios. The delicious food with Go Power. Cheerio is the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Add milk, and you've got just the breakfast to start a healthy, happy day. It's real muscle-building food. Every spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. So eat Cheerios. People will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The headlight of a fast approaching train revealed the Lone Ranger working desperately to cut the ropes that held his Indian friend Toto to the gleaming rails. This gripping situation and the events that lead up to it will thrill you in our next Mile a Minute adventure. Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.